We are now going to start to assemble the gantry, and that basically it's the uh, this X uh, rail here uh, and the two end pieces we've already made up, uh, and also uh, the X carriage uh, with the Z uh, movement on it as well. And I'm going to start by putting the left hand end plate on. Now the ends of the shaft have already been threaded for these screws, so that's fairly straightforward. Now the upper screw uh, at the top is the one that takes the single washer. And the reason for that is there's a slightly elongated hole there. And the bottom pair of screws don't need any washers uh, because uh, we have this plastic uh, drag chain support arm. Those are uh, in. I'm now going to tighten them up. And you can afford to tighten these up reasonably well with a handheld gadget like this. Now don't get carried away and fit the other end. Uh, we've got to put this little lot on first. Now in order to get this on you may need to adjust those uh, adjustable rollers which are the four at the bottom. Uh, one on each side, one on each side. Now before we get uh, carried away and fix the second end plate on we've got to put two of these uh, pre-assembly uh, rectangular uh, nuts into the top channel here and they will be needed at a later stage and now we can go ahead and fix uh, the other end plate on. Now do take care uh, particularly with uh, things like uh, the micro switch uh, connectors here that as you're handling this you don't put it down upside down and squish one of these so just take a lot of care. Once all four are nipped up you can then give them the final tighten. We're now going to take the 750 millimeter length of rail that comes with the, the drag chain and this is going to be attached between there and there. The next stage is to do the rails, I suppose you'd call them the Y rails, I don't know, but anyway the rails that will run on either side and if you look at the maker slide uh, and look at the end section uh, you've got first of all the uh, bearing surface here and here uh, where the wheels are going to go and those will run on there and then between them on this side is a channel and that channel has to go at the bottom. So just like before I'm doing things symmetrically I've got the, uh, the channel at the bottom there and the channel at the bottom there uh, I've got my various plates and I'm now going to start the assembly and you'll note that the the long straight side of the plate is going to be on the same side as the uh, channel that I was talking about. So it's going to go on like so. So that's those two done. Next we put two of these rectangular nuts in each of these. That's two of those in the top. Now we've now reintroduced the uh, baseboard and we're going to slide uh, the gantry now onto those rails. Now this can be quite tricky so you've got to take a bit of care and what you must absolutely make sure is that nothing drops on the floor as you're doing this. There we go. There's that one. I'll do the other side now. So now I've got the gantry on both rails. Note the cutout here and here and note that we've got the uh, bearing surfaces on the outside. And now I'm going to fix the other two end plates. We're now going to slide two of these uh, rectangular nuts into there, two into each of there and then we're going to use a pair of these shorter screws to then effectively fix this in place. And I'm just making sure it's flush at this end here before I tighten it up nicely. And I'll do exactly the same at this other end. And that's nice and tight. I'll now do the same at the other end. Now the next stage in the construction of the x carve is not documented as such uh, as a single sort of entity as it were uh, in the x carve instructions uh, but I'm going to bring it together in one place now and that is checking what you've done.
And by checking, I mean that we need to make sure that uh, everything is running true and it is all square. And I'll do it step by step. Now this may seem like a, a boring stage, please don't skip it because if you want your CNC to be accurate you've got to go through this stage at some point and I think this is the best time to do it. Now as a quick recap, everything is tightened up, uh, the uh, various uh, adjustable pulleys have been adjusted so that they are uh, running uh, smoothly uh, as they should. Now what should be happening is as the gantry moves forward and backwards, it is exactly running parallel to the uh, lines that run this way on the wasteboard. Similarly, if you move uh, this head unit from left to right, uh, it should run parallel to uh, the lines going across here on the wasteboard. Now we can check that straight away and if it's out we can make some minor adjustments. Uh, first of all, I'm going to check it for running uh, true against these lines. What I'm going to do is take a, an ordinary square and I'm going to identify uh, one of these lines on the wasteboard and I'm going to move this unit up against there. Now I hope you can see that my square is flat against this part of the plate here and it is in the middle of what is this thick line here. And now if I move this forward and don't let it go right to the very end so it hits the end plates here, just bring it forward gently and then we're going to put that up against there. And I've brought you in nice and close and I hope you can see that uh, for all intents and purposes uh, that is on that same line. So I'm happy with it running square to the board forwards and backwards in the Y direction. Now we need to check the X direction. Now what I've done this time is I've positioned the gantry such that when I bring the square up against this front face here uh, that it's now on this thick line on the wasteboard. And I'm now going to look to see if it's on that same line if I put it up against the other side. And I hope you can see just there that we're spot on. So those two checks, the X and Y checks there, are super. Of course, mine's just right, so I can't show you any adjustments, but if yours isn't right in those two areas, all I can suggest is that you, you check uh, whether you've got the sides here flush with the end of the bit of rail that's at the bottom and the side there flush with a bit of rail at the bottom, check that. The same at the back. Also, and this is really important, check that the uh, wasteboard is fitted centrally to the, uh, those bottom pieces of framing, the one at the front here and the one at the back. Because if it's skewed in any way, uh, then relative to the baseboard, this frame will be skewed because it's taking its reference from the end of the metal frame. So if the baseboard is incorrectly placed, uh, then the whole thing gets thrown out. So if, when you do your checks, uh, you find yours is not uh, just right like mine, uh, then that's what you need to check. Now, we've got everything working fine in the X and the Y direction, but we've got to make sure that everything is set up correctly for the Z direction. Now, that means that this gantry has to be parallel to the baseboard, and it needs to be parallel whether it's here at the front or here at the back. So in other words, we're checking to make sure that uh, the baseboard isn't dipping down in this corner or dipping down in that corner or whatever. And I thought how I should go about this, and I've cut a block of uh, rubbishy old wood, but it is cut absolutely squarely. It's beautifully cut. Uh, and that just fits underneath the, the gantry. And I then went to the old-fashioned feeler gauges. Now these are imperial ones but it doesn't matter. Uh, I went for the uh, feeler gauges to find a one that would just fill the gap uh, if I were to shove it underneath there. Now I'm going to start by bringing it forward to the very front. I've actually done this procedure but I'll tell you what I did. 
Um, I, I got my reference, you know, my block height and the need for the feeler gauge from the centre. I then went off to the right hand side and I found that it was a little bit uh, loose. So what I then did was I undid these two screws here. And that gives you a tiny bit of movement that way. Uh, I then sort of pushed down and then tightened them up again. And that brought that back to where it should be. If there's not quite enough movement there, you can get a fractional, a tiny smidgen of movement by loosening those and pushing down. But actually, this is your best bet. Having done those, I then came across to this other side and I checked here. And in my case, it was the other side that this time. I had to raise it slightly. So again, I undid these two. Uh, put my feeler gauge underneath, just brought that down and then tightened them up again. So at the front here, the uh, X uh, rail here is parallel to the board. And I then repeated the process at the back. So that then means that over the whole waste board, the tool which is going to be mounted in here is going to be cutting to the same depth uh, wherever it happens to be. Let's just suppose that you're trying to cut out something square like this. If you had not done those checks, then you might end up with something which is more like that, so it's skewed. If you're trying to cut uh, a circle out, it would end up being slightly elliptical. So, so getting uh, the uh, X and the Y uh, adjustments right cures that. And obviously that last one we just did, uh, the uh, checking the height underneath the X carriage at the front and at the back, left and right, uh, make sure that when you're cutting something, you're cutting to the same depth. And you might think, well, it doesn't matter because I'm going to cut all the way through. That's not the case because you might be doing some sign work, some lettering using a V cutter. Uh, and wh when you uh, carve somebody's name, you find that on this side uh, it's carving beautifully and on this side it's either too deep or too shallow and it starts to look odd. So it's important that all these checks are done. And now the final check is to make sure that the uh, z-axis is running vertical. So in other words, when the right is going up and down, it's going up and down perpendicular to this plane here. Uh, because if it comes up and down at an angle, then at different heights, it's going to be cutting in a different place. So uh, what we have to do is use a square and bring it up against either the side there where the motor is, uh, or the side of this uh, main motor housing casting on this side. It's the same piece of metal, so it's whichever is easier for you. And if it's out at all, then you need to uh, undo, there are four screws at the back here. So if you need to make any adjustments, it's two screws here at the top, and they're a similar pair. I don't think I can get the camera down low enough, but uh, at the, at the bottom end of the casting, uh, there are a pair at the back as well. You need to undo those, make an adjustment, and then make sure everything's square, and then tighten it up. That's it. Final check. Yep, I'm happy with that. So these are the checks which uh, you can do at any time, but doing it before you've got the wiring in, doing it before you go any further, is a good idea. And, and once you've finished the whole assembly uh, and uh, you do a test carve, you might need to revisit some of these adjustments just to check and make sure they're spot on.